Hello, hello, hello. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, bringing you the good times in music, fashion, pop culture, and entertainment. Uh, we're going to have a fun show for you guys today. We've only got one guest, and he's going to come on the second hour. So Ron and I, along with Danielle and Scotty J, are going to keep you entertained, and we've got some cool music and some movie videos of Ron's, and uh, we're going to play some different fun stuff for everybody to see. But before we get started... Let's first say hi to, to the team, starting off with my cool, outrageous man about town, Mr. Bionic Ron Russell. Hello and welcome to the show. <laughs> Those grapes are so fucking delicious. If I tell you, the best grapes I ever ate, freezing yeah. cold from the refrigerator. Okay. All right, so then we've got to give a welcome to the man behind the, uh, the, the video boards in Philadelphia, Mr. Scotty J. How are you? Awesome, guys. How are you doing? There we good, go. Good, good. Yes. And then we've got the fabulously gorgeous oh. lover of one night stands, oh, Danielle in the W4CY don't studios. Don't studios. Hey, Danielle. Hello, fellas. Don't make her head any bigger because if her head gets too big, it won't fit through the zippers. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got a chat room with people in the chat room. Let's say hi. We got our, our lovely, fabulous. Eileen dogs. Shapiro, the dogs. That's a little dog barking, everybody. Um, we've got Eileen Shapiro, Teresa Sabin, Twism White Peace, Bruce Glasgow, Hub Reynolds Jr. What's up, Hub Reynolds? Dave Hughes from Stars Now UK. Um, chat room is filling up. We're going to have a lot of fun for you guys today. It's been a very interesting week, and it's only, uh, it's only Wednesday. Um, so I guess I'm going to turn the floor over. Do you want to like tell everybody about you? Because everybody's asking. So here's well, Ron, everybody. Everyone knows that Jane Russell was my dearest best friend like my sister. And I idolized her and I listened to her all the time when she gave me Hollywood advice. And I wrote it on Facebook today. And she said, do not discuss any of your health conditions or surgeries with people. Remember, you're an actor. That's all they have to know about you. And I agreed with it. You know. Oh, well, you didn't follow it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, you know, a lot of people found out and it went out on the wires and I got a lot of people saying, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me? What am I going to tell you? They cut a hole in my, up here and they shoved a machine in there that keeps me alive. And they said, hadn't I done this in six months, I would have been dead. This is no lie. They told me that the, the, the anesthesiologist as well as a doctor and a, a nurse, my rhythms were so low that I absolutely was not getting enough blood to the brain. That's why I was a little kooky sometimes and forgetful because the oxygen in the blood was not going. And my voice is back to being my own voice. It was like a weird voice. So your heart has to beat at least six. Oh, excuse me. See, it makes you burp to your heart. But anyway, it, your, your heart has to be, be beat 60 to 70 beats. Mine was like 32. And they said, a few more, and you would have been a corpse. I said, okay, let's put it in. So they shoved it in, and it's a nothing really surgery. I feel fine. It's a little achy. I feel like I got shot in the shoulder, or somebody threw a spear in the shoulder, or someone shot an arrow in my shoulder, or someone stabbed me in my shoulder. You get the point? It was a point <laughs> that hurt my shoulder. My doctor was fabulous. I go to Eisenhower Hospital, which is the best hospital in Palm Springs. All the fancy schmancies go there. The land that the hospital is built on and its acres and acres of land belonged to the comedian Bob Hope. And before Bob Hope passed away, he donated all of that land to the Eisenhower Hospital to build this phenomenal hospital. I mean, we have all kinds of, Dolores Hart has a, a thing all about heart. And I found out because Bob Hope had a bad heart. And living in Palm Springs at the time, the only thing he could have done had he had a heart attack was go before the medicine man of the Cochillo Valley Indians, because that's all they had here. So Hope and Sinatra and a bunch of other big shots, I don't think they really cared about the people. 
getting the uh, good hospitalization. They were caring more about themselves because they made Palm Springs their permanent residence and they were here most of the time. And I guess they figured if they got a heart attack, you know, I mean, who's going to take care of them? So they built this marvelous hospital. I think the Betty Ford Clinic is somewhere around there, too, for all the drug addicts and alcohol. I have no idea. It's a, it's a really wonderful complex. It and is, though. It's a great, big, wonderful complex. Yeah. We're going back tomorrow for Ron to get checked out. Everybody in the chat room is saying your color is back to your face again, though. I know that. This is complete. This is makeup number 10. No, no. No makeup. <laughs> no, you know what? Uh, my ankles were... Sw- listen, listen to me now. This is serious. Let's not make fun with this. If you have swollen legs ankles you must immediately go to the doctor because that's a sign of a heart failure when you have swollen ankles don't think it's because you have too much salt you ate potato chips and you're going to take water pills and it's going to go away bullshit your vision gets blurry your hearing is minimal your speech sometimes you say words that you can't pronounce properly and you know the words well these are all signs of a stroke or a heart attack. So don't ignore them by saying, oh, I drank too much last night, it's a hangover, or I had too much sex, like Danielle does. You know, so take care of yourself. Like Danielle does. It's true, everybody. It is true. Ron is doing better, though. He looks terrific. Everybody in the chat room says that they said they love our shirts. I don't know if they're meaning yours, mine, or both. And uh, mm-hmm. Twism said he's heard of Bob Hope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Just, just a little Bob Hope you've heard of. One of the greatest comedians ever in our business. One of the most popular men who went all over the world for every war, supporting the, the troops, bringing to them gorgeous people like Joey Heatherton, Raquel Welch, Jane Russell, to sing and perform for the tro- troops before they went into combat during the Second World War. Korean War, Vietnamese War. I mean, he was just a, a really terrific fella. I never met him, but I've known his wife, Dolores, because Jane Russell and Dolores were best friends. Jane and Bob Hope were best friends. They made two movies together, and they remained dear friends forever. But he had passed away prior to my knowing Jane. I actually never met him either, but my father met him, so he used to tell us a story about what, the day he met Bob Hope and went to lunch with him. Um, so anyway, though, well, anybody, Bob, Hope, everybody, Bob Hope is a superstar. And everyone loved him that knew him. And his wife, Dolores, was a doll. I mean, she was the nicest lady, such a, a nice, kind woman. And she was a good singer and a very pretty woman who lived into her 90s also. Everybody, Most everybody else knows who Bob Hope yeah, is. Yeah, so Bob that's Hope cool. is like a legend. I mean, he's this Hollywood legend. You got to like love the whole thing. So anyway... <laughs> So, uh, so we've had an interesting week and, uh, yeah, you have not me. It wasn't so interesting for me. What are you talking about? Like I sat in the hospital all day waiting for you. Yeah, I would was sit a, in the hospital waiting for you too. I don't give a shit. It's not me getting sliced open. <laughs> you know, you just sat there playing with your little computer, tweeting everybody, tweeting, whatever the hell you'd call it. I was trying. That's one That's thing about the hospital. You guys, whenever you go to the hospital, the Wi-Fi doesn't work. And if you go on the Wi-Fi, it's unsecured. So you can't really go on the Wi-Fi cause people can steal all your shit. So I really didn't get to do a whole lot, but um, um, but I'm happy that Ron's went through it all well, and he's on the mend, and his color is back, and he's st- stiff and he's sore, which they said it's a six week it's a six week recovery time. Because they cut you right up here on the collarbone, right here with the incision, a two two inch incision. They slide this little computer in you. Two wires go to the heart, and it makes the heart like a 20-year-old again because the heart beats strong and hard, which circulates the blood so you feel better. Now they've invented a new one that Cleveland, Ohio, that hospital invented, and they're waiting now to push it out to the world. So everybody listen up to this one. It's the size of the tip of my pinky. That's all it is. It's a wireless uh, what do I have? Pacemaker. Yeah, pacemaker. And now they slide it somehow into the heart main artery. It stays there from 10 to 11 years. The battery doesn't go dead f- until 11 years. No no problems with it. See, these, this one I have, you could have problems with it. But the new one, you just don't have problems with no, it. No, yours is considered wireless. 
Am I wireless? It's How come they stuck wireless. two wires in my heart? I know, but they still consider it wireless. Even the ones that are wireless have they have a wire. They have to have something to connect it to. Not the little baby, the little 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 penis thing that goes into the artery and it does its its thing there. It's in the heart. Yeah, that's what yours is doing too. Your no, mine is in, in my fucking shoulder, mailing. And the wires. I don't know. I looked up the model and it says it's wireless. So it's not. It's got. What? It's considered. They say it's considered and, wireless. And you're considered a homosexual. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're, it's considered. Now uh, the wireless. Actually, Dave, you said he just had his dad. Uh, had his his dad's just had the battery changed in his, and he was out of the hospital in a couple of hours. Yeah, it's no big deal. Thank God. You know, if it wasn't for this pacemaker, I would be dead in six months, like they said. People died years ago from exactly what I have. You know, I'll be 80 in May, and that's no chicken. I mean, I look good, I act good, I have plenty of energy, I'll probably live to be 150, but I'll be all bionic. There you go. Robotic. They're just going to stick everything in me to make it make everything work. We want to make some more hellos, because uh, uh, B. Claudia just joined us from Germany. Hey, B, and so did Meg. Maggie, baby. She says she can't believe she had to learn about this on here. You better call her. I know, I know, I (laughs) know. Listen, Meg. That's the reason why I haven't called you, honey, because I know you, I'm going to cry. I know you love me and you worry about me. He's, he's good, Meg. All is good, and I'll make and him I, call and you. And I worry about you, Meg, because I love you so much. I worry about you. I really do. It's like every time I talk to you, I just keep saying, please, no bad news, no bad news. Everything is good all the way around, everybody. But truthfully, it was Cleveland Clinic. That invented, ask your husband. Her husband is Alan uh, Ruddick, the uh, pulmonist, the top, top lung guy in the business. And he works, I, is he still working out of Cleveland or did he retire? Anyway. Cleveland um, Clinic. Cle- Cleveland Clinic has it. The rest of the country is waiting for the approval. And he said, Rob Reynolds says he needs to talk to you about the size. But anyway, all right, everybody. So, Well, the size is not big. Oh, the signs. Oh, I thought he was talking about size. No, it's little. It's very little. The thing he got is very little. Right. Uh, Years ago, you could see it bouncing out of your skin, and the friggin' wires were showing. Now, that was scary. I don't even know. I don't know where mine. You know what? We should put one in you, Danielle. For what? For your pussy, so that you have thrills all day long. (laughs) It can give you an orgasm. If they put the two wires to your clit, and every two seconds it goes, bip, bip, sends electrical energy. You'll just walk around smiling. You'll never need a man again. <laughs> and you'll be the happiest woman in the world. Because sure. people, people are going to say, how come you're smiling? And you're going to say, I can't tell. They just said, Jimmy said Ron's thing was little. His pacemaker. Other, mm-hmm. other than that, when CC Pennis was here, they nicknamed him Tripod. Uh, <laughs> and I have to stand a joke now. You know. Now that I've got so much blood and blood pressure going through my body, my penis is twice the size and twi- twice the width. So, you know, you got a bigger wing. Also, Backpack John is in the chat room. What's up, Backpack John? Meg says she loves you, too. I love Meg And so uh, Twism says milk carton. He likes milk carton better okay, than... whatever. Make fun. Milk carton too. better than... <laughs> Make fun. What do I care? If I were younger... Better I'd... than tripod. <laughs> if I were young, I would charge... But I'm too old. I want to do daddy porn. Jimmy said I'm not allowed. Ron Russell, the love muscle. (laughs) (laughs) Have a good time, kids. It's okay. But getting back to my Megala, my sweet Meg, who I've been friends with for a lot of years. One of the most deliciously divine. What kind of words I use? Like 1945 words. My kids are right. Betty Betty Davis. You talk like you're coming out of a Turner Classic movie, except for when you throw like a fuck or a cunt in there. (laughs) I don't use those words, you filthy pig. (laughs) Anyway, my Maggie is my sweetie pie. But honey, that's why I did not call you. Because I know if I would have told you, you would have been carrying on. You know, doctor's wife, they think they're doctors. And you would have been telling me, you can't do this, don't do that. da 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 so anyway, I'll call you after the show. So we're going to do a, a commercial real quick. Commercial real quick. All right, everybody. So Ron and I, I think we're going to find out tomorrow, are going to be traveling to New York City because yes. on Saturday, December 14th, Soho Johnny, who's been on the show, is throwing Rockin' Holiday Soiree to benefit the American Cancer Society. And... The scheduled performers are Leon from Leon and the Peoples. This is Leon and the Peoples. So Leon and the Peoples are going to be there. Kim Sledge, who's uh, one of Sister Sledge, singing all the Sister Sledge hits. What? I want Kathy Sledge there. I love her. 
Um, maybe Kathy Sledge, we don't know. Uh, with tribute artist Rainier Martin, who's a Donna Summer tribute artist. Stan the Manhampton, who's a Teddy Pendergrass tribute artist. We also have Debonair Casanova, Strafe, Desi and the Undercover Band, and Michael Musto, who's been a guest on the show. And the whole thing is to benefit the American Cancer Society, and it's taking place at Castle La Femme, which is 140 Charles Street, New York, New York. Um, you get a, a dinner buffet I with think, your admission. I think, I think it's a drag club. It's 5 p.m. to midnight, and um, and you can go to SohoJohnny.com to get tickets because you got to get tickets ahead of time be, to be able to go there. It's going to be a lot of fun, and, and we think that we're going to be going – uh, into New York for it. We're just uh, waiting to make sure everything's good with Ron and traveling. And we, I'm glad I'm fine. And we're going to stay at Eileen Shapiro's mansion on Long Island. And I'm going to sneak around her house. And when she comes out of the shower, I'm taking pictures of her tits nude. And then I'm putting it on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. You probably don't even. She'd probably just pose for you anyway. <laughs> So anyway, you guys go to SohoJohnny.com and get your tickets. It's going to be a lot of fun. Everybody loves Leon from Leon and the Peoples. You guys know him. We had him on the show a few weeks ago. He's uh, in Cliffhanger with uh, Sylvester Stallone. Uh, like a Prayer in the Madonna video. He's the star of that, and that was a controversial video. He plays David Ruffin in the Temptations movie. He's in the Academy Award Hold film, Cool right Runnings. Hold it right there. Go no further. What? When he played in the Temptation movie, he was phenomenal. Absolutely. I couldn't believe that, that Leon was such a fine actor. He's a great actor, a good-looking man, and a dear, dear friend of ours. I think he was in Oz, that TV show Oz. We we He's in a whole him. bunch of things. We love him. And his song, uh, Love, Love is, is a Beautiful, beautiful thing. thing, is a beautiful song, folks. Go out and buy it. It's a happy song to send to somebody for their birthday or an anniversary. It's just the lyric is beautiful, and the music is so positive and clean and go oh, i just spit grapes all over you i'm sorry that's okay i gotta sit up well, anyway wipe the grapes my stomach's off. looking kind of big sitting the way i'm chewing there. grapes as i'm talking to him and a piece of grape flew out and hit him that's okay oh. everybody loves love is a beautiful thing so it's a lot of fun uh we're gonna have a really good time you guys so please if you're in the new york city area or in the tri-state area and you want to have a great night out for a great cause uh, please go to SohoJohnny.com and get tickets because it is for charity. Thank you, you so much. And you get to meet me and Jimmy. We That's have right. some fun. We'll party together. And we've got some other guests that are going to be coming. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll bring some. Yuval uh, David is going to be there, which we had a blast when he was on our show. Uh, Jason Finney is going to be there. And I'm going to bring some gummy bears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. First of all, you can't bring them because it's illegal. Oh, it's New York. It's in New York. You can't bring them. <laughs> well, I'll tell them I made a mistake. Yeah. I bought them at the candy store. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny because everything is like legal here. Like you go in and you buy brownies. You buy all that crap. <laughs> I definitely love that movie Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger. Isn't that a good movie? Favorite movie. Uh. And Cool Runnings. Yeah, okay. Cool Runnings is a great movie. I, I love it. Yeah, man. Bruce Glasgow says now he's going to get grapes out of the fridge. <laughs> These grapes, I mean, California grows the most fabulous stuff. Pardon me for talking with a mouthful of grapes. It's so but, I could, I, but I could have been speaking to you with a mouthful of pubic hair. So the grapes are better. Yeah, you could have. Not so, yours. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Danielle's. Oh, yeah. Because da Danielle has quite a garden, right, Danielle? Oh, my God. My garden is... Beautiful. I'm like, no, I'm more oh, like, you don't have an airplane strip? Uh, a landing no. strip. I ain't got none of that. I'm more like Lucky Charms. I'm magically delicious. <laughs> that was good, though. You're coming up with quick ones. Danielle doesn't have her box shaving or anything. They said, watch out with all the grapes. They're going to make you crap yourself. <laughs> Could you, couldn't you say it's a nice way of introducing some sugar into my sugarless body? <laughs> yeah. It's a healthy way of doing it instead of having a Three Musketeers or a Snickers bar. That and actually, Bruce, Bruce Glasso just says put the put the gummy bears in a Haribo bag. Haribo is a gummy bear brand. You can just buy a bag of them and then mix yours in with them. <laughs> if I go in with a, a gummy bear with three teddy bears in it, what are they going to do? Arrest me? Put me in prison? Yeah. Oh, give me a <laughs> It's against the law. <laughs> Meanwhile, they should go clean up the homeless people and help them and not arrest people for eating a gummy bear. There you go. Anyway. We have such a homeless problem in California. 
It's epidemic. The hundreds, thousands all over the streets, tents they're building. Now they call them condo villages. That one I love. Homeless condo villages to make the, the homeless feel, you know, not so sleazy. Hey, Dave Hughes, too. Dave Hughes from Stars Now UK. Yes, Leon played David Ruffin. It's an award-winning film, and he Fabulous. is excellent in it. I've seen it Fabulous. like 15 times, so you definitely want to see it. And I love that film. The story was so good. It's a good movie for a change. Oh, can we talk about our last movie we saw? <laughs> yes. What did we see? I forgot. We saw Motherless Brooklyn. Was that before last week's show or not? What did we see after Motherless Brooklyn? I think that's the last one we said. Now we're going to go see the new movie with Helen Mirren. Oh, I love her. I forgot what it's called. Though. Oh, I love her. Anybody know the new Helen Mirren movie? It comes out with the guy. Uh, um, She's the best actress. She and, and the other broads from England. Those oh. old ladies are great. Shit, I forgot. What's Who's the guy? He's like world famous. I always tweet him to try to get him on our show, and that's I forgot the, his name. That's the English actor. What's his name? Oh, gosh. English actor. Just call him English actor. They, they said that they thought the pacemaker was supposed to help your memory. <laughs> it, 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 you're hurting my eardrums with that hideous... Ian hi McKellen. Ian McKellen. Hi that hyena laugh. Oh, my yours. God. Twism White Piece new Ian McKellen. That is unbelievable. But Twism Jimmy Star, 55 the years good old. Liar. Up. The Good the Liar. Good liar. The movie, there yeah. we go. It's called oh. The Good Liar. I wanna, can't wait to go see that because she's going to fuck him up. It's going to be awesome. And Jimmy's 55, so don't make fun of memories. Way to go, Twism, though. That was a ro you're a rock star, dude. You like to work that one out really good. <laughs> he Googled it. Oh, he has to said because he knows him because the dude was in Lord of the Rings. So uh, he's Gandalf in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> My movie's coming out. Found Fear. Yep. Yep. And now Big Freaking Rat is on IMDb, everybody. So you can go to IMDb and look up Big Freaking Rat. That's see. the character I really enjoyed playing. That was fun. I played a real illiterate uh, Brooklyn-y person who like never left Brooklyn, who absolutely just talks like it's another language from another planet. And the character was a wonderful character, and I ran with it. And Churchill, the director, was kind enough to let me run with it and play it like a guy from Brooklyn who was a bit of a stupid ass. So here's what we're going to do, because you just made a segue. So, so you guys, uh, both... Both Danielle and Scotty J pull out the Croker trailer. Oh, come on. And now you're going to get to see. So this movie is not really very good, even though it's Wait, got all these you're reviews. You're going to put Croker on? Just the trailer. Just the trailer. Oh, my God. I'm pulling the wires and out listen, of my pacemaker. So, no, no, because yours is real. You're really good in it, first of I'm all. I'm good in everything. <clears throat> and so you guys listen. Uh, so this Jimmy, is a movie. Jimmy, 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 when I make love to you, I'm good. I'm a great actor. I know. <laughs> 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 My goodness, I'm going to leave Ron plugged in for this one. Yeah, leave him plugged in. So listen up, you guys. So we have this movie. And it's, it was Ron's first movie back. After a long hiatus, a long re 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 long re and the name of I the film I was raising is, my kids, and the, the name of the film is Croker. And uh, even though it's got like fifty five star reviews, it's really not a good film. But he's very good in well, it. Well, let me tell you something about the <clears throat> film. A film is made for entertainment. So if people are entertained by it because it's so bad that it's good because it's funny. You, you watch it and you go, oh, my God, I can't believe they did this. You know, the guy shot it with a, a little Keystone camera, no lights, no marks, no no nothing. I mean, the scripts were uh, – anyway, it turned out to be a campy, funny film that is really, you know, so bad that it's good. So here's the whole thing, too. In it, you'll see Ron, and he's playing a Brooklyn cop. And this is the cop outfit that when we went to 7-Eleven, they gave him his food for free because they thought he was really a cop. And he didn't have to pay for it. And I didn't know. I walked out. I said, Jimmy, we got all that food for six bucks. And then Jimmy, the thief, said to me, shh, shh, keep walking. They thought you were a real cop. And that's why they didn't charge you for your food. It was hilarious. And uh, um, so anyway, the name of the film is Croker, you guys. Ron is the, the one of the stars of the film. There's three stars. He's one of them. But he's definitely the best one. The other one is Miss Pennsylvania. Who uh, was Gorgeous, in Miss America? Gorgeous, sweetheart, a doll um, of a girl. And then I forgot who the other guy is because he's not very, very good. Who? Uh, who's the other guy in it? I forgot. <laughs> no, that's what's his name. They had the suit. The, he had a suit. The man is like five foot seven. He's probably a thirty-eight jacket, and he had like a forty-four suit on. So he looked like Charlie Chaplin, and I couldn't breathe from it when he came on the set in that suit. The, the sleeves were over his fingernails. The, the jacket was hanging. I said to him, you got to be kidding. 
couldn't you find somebody to, to loan you a suit that's better than that? And he said, no, this fits all right. I like loose. I said, loose is one thing, but hanging off your body is another. So, Scotty, do you and Danielle both have it? Uh, yes. For Scotty? a second, have, you said ha- have, ha- have what? I have it, but what's it? Oh, the Croker trailer. Oh, that, yeah. I have that. Okay, so on Enjoy. All right, everybody, so this is Ron's. Uh, return to acting debut. We did it about eight years ago. The name of the film is Croker. I'm sure it's streaming places and you can see it. And uh, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's not really very good, but it is a lot of fun. It's very campy. It's like Killer Tomatoes, you know, or, you know, or The Blob. Those films were so bad that people loved them. They're cult films. And I'm kind of hoping for the producer, who's a really nice guy, that this film becomes uh, camp and, and, survives so here it is everybody this is croaker starring ron russell enjoy all right you all know the drill last one for the ball kiss it why do you look like that why I want to tell you a story about Crocus. Hi, this is Macy Patterson with the Jimmy Star Show News. We are here today in front of the Cannonsburg Borough Building. Over the past few weeks, local residents have monitored the area and noticed that once again, the levels are on the rise. I got four corpus electis in the past two days. Cause of death? Sudden cardiac death caused by ventricular fibrillation. So what you're trying to tell me is this urban legend is haunting this town. Most legends start as true stories. Go ahead and make fun. I'm ready for my next encounter. Frogs aren't waist high. Get in the mind of your enemy. Rookies. Look, I got an idea. Instead of sitting in your kitchen looking like a -a make-a-wish goalie, let's go down to the creek. You know, Kate, I'm gonna kick your ass one of these days. You, you, you're the murderer. There's no monster out there. Quinn, where are you? Quinn! Okay. There you go, everybody. That's Croker. Did you see that at the end? I think that at the end where it shows that the like the monster's killing Ron. It was hilarious because he had to go walk through. There's a scene in the movie where he has to walk through the woods in the night, and he was afraid of the bugs. So it's actually my feet that are walking because he would walk in the woods. <laughs> Correction. Correct. I was not afraid of the bugs. There were ticks. In the woods. It's Pennsylvania. Uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The, the capital of tick, ticks. I wasn't about, They weren't paying me enough to walk through a, a field at night with ticks. Period. It's, a, it's, you know, you could get very sick from ticks if they bite you. You can get Lyme's disease. So I sent Jimmy. They said it's very blue, blue, uh, very Blair Witch. And Hub Reynolds says, nice movie star, Ron. <laughs> they first of all, they cut my big scene out because they didn't like me. Because when the film came out, I told everybody not to go see it. I was embarrassed. So the, uh, the owner of the film or the producer of the film really cut me down to a minimum. But that's stupid because I was the only thing that made the film look credible. So he actually took out the best parts. And I saw they said that Pennsylvania is a tick state. Oh yeah, because Rock Titan knows because that's that's a uh, that's Scotty J. And he lives there. Yeah, so you know you can have your ticks. Very Blair Witch even makes it very cool. So anyway, you guys, I'm sure it's streaming someplace. I had a bunch of copies, but I sold them on eBay, and uh, it's a lot of fun to watch it, and uh, you'll get a kick out of it. But but yes, Ron is very good in my it. My accent was absolutely uh, what is known as antique Brooklyn. Not Brooklyn accent of today. My accent was an accent of the 1940s when people said things like, you know, you got a gat on you, baby. Give me that gun over here. You know, I'm going to shoot you one. Give me that over there. Get over there. Go stand against the wall. You're going to get it, baby. You're going to get it right between the eyes. So don't fight it. Don't fight it. The bullet's coming. Oh, yeah, it's coming, the bullet. 
that sounds like Jimmy when he says he's coming. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do next then, you guys. So that was Ron's first movie when he came back. From Hollywood. <laughs> and now we're going to play the trailer for his first movie. Oh, my God. That kind of woman. Yes. So you guys, oh. he's a soldier. It'll be very hard to find him because no, like, I'm not sure which I one he is, so, but he's in the trailer. I was so beautiful back then. I was 19 years old. I can't watch this. It'll break my heart. So anyway, you guys, that kind of woman is Vaughn's first <clears throat> film. He played a soldier. It stars Sophia Loren and Tab Hunter. Mm, who I made friends with, and Tab and I remained friends until his death. And I love Tab Hunter, and I miss him so uh, much. I actually got this movie on eBay a couple of years ago and gave it to Ron for Christmas, and I I also got the movie poster and gave it to Ron for Christmas. Yeah, but I don't want to see this movie because I was 19 looking 15 and skinny. I was 157 pounds. Um, I was so pretty. So do you guys have the uh, do you guys have the That Kind of Woman trailer, both Scotty J and Danielle? Oh, I don't know if I'm in the trailer. Uh, yeah. yeah, you are. Oh, I am in the trailer. I doubt that okay. I know. Um, you got it too, Scotty J? Yep. All right. I'll enjoy, everybody. So we saw a Croker trailer which was Ron's movie back into Hollywood. And now we're going to see the very first movie that he did when he was 19, 19 years fi- old. 1959. 1959. This, fi- this film was shot. I'm introducing it. Well, I'm going to give the background. The <laughs> film was shot in Long Beach, Long Island, and it was supposed to be Miami Beach, Florida. Sophia Loren and Barbara Nichols are walking along the platform, and we soldiers are hanging from the train, screaming and whistling. Well, what happened was they wet the ground to, so it shines better in the film. Sophia slid on it and fell down and hit her knee. They immediately brought her into a dressing room. The ambulance came. They carried on. Four hours we had to wait for them to say that she could walk again and, and shoot the scene. So then Sophia and Barbara Nichols came out and they walked again. What I found fascinating about a black and white film, I had never made a black and white film. I didn't know. Sophia had on a like a pink hat. A, a green dress, a red shoes, a blue gloves. I mean, all the colors. And I said to one of the camera people, they got to be kidding. She looks like a clown. They said, no, Ron, in black and white, these colors shade up differently. And it looks really nice in black and white, which, as you will see, in black and white, it shades beautifully. But in person, they look like clowns. She so said, everybody wait, in wait, the wait. Ch- Sophia Loren was wonderful. She was 26 years old. Her English was very minimal. Her interpreter was always with her. But she enjoyed me because I spoke spoke Italian. And some of my grammar wasn't so hot. And Sophia got a kick out of it. So, so anyway, hold on. Anyway, then we went and shot again in Central Park and Grand Central Station. So by the end of the shoot, Sophia got to know me and gave me a beautiful kiss on my left cheek when I wrapped the film. And I wouldn't wash my left cheek forever. Tab Hunter was absolutely uh, the sweetest, most gorgeous guy you ever wanted to see. Okay, my turn? Yes, now go. Okay, so first of all, everybody in the chat room, almost everybody in the chat room, except for B. Claudia, who said she was maybe a few months old, um, everybody in the chat room is basically like saying that they weren't even a sperm yet in 1959. Well, you know, I'm in the business business 58 years. I've done quite a lot of film, mostly stage. I've been on stage for 45 years. So So here we go, everybody. Here we go. This is Ron's very first film that he was participating in, and it's called That Kind of Woman, starring Sophia Loren and Tab Hunter. And Barbara Nichols. And Barbara Nichols, and I want everybody to enjoy the trailer. And it happens to be a very good film. Go. kind of woman, the romantic kind of story the screen tells today with new sparkle, new sophistication. Starring Sophia Lauren in her most startling role as Kay, the kind of woman who turns every man's head. Oh, I could be arrested for what I'm thinking. Tab Hunter as Red, the young rookie who turned the tables on her. He doesn't look old enough to drink. I'm old enough to do anything. A reckless, impetuous boy storming the defenses of this exciting, expensive woman in two crazy nights and one carefree day, turning the world topsy-turvy for all of them. George Sanders as the tycoon who owned her. Listen, you, you can have any woman you want. The most beautiful. 
the most acceptable. Yes. I'm afraid other women failed to interest me as much as they once did. Barbara Nichols as the girl who befriended her. I've seen you tough ones when you get the call. Before you know it, you'll be running bathroom through the grass. Keenan Wynn as the tycoon stooge who guarded her. You go out that door now. You know where you'll end up. A woman who had everything but what she wanted most. A boy who wouldn't take no for an answer. Breaking down the barriers between them. All right, soldier, that's enough. really was a good film. Sophia Loren was not happy with Tab Hunter because she felt that Tab Hunter was way too young looking and too boyish. She liked older men like Harry Grant and uh, people, you know, Frank Sinatra. She really was, she felt it was very miscasted. And Tab Hunter, who's a sweetheart, had a little trouble with her because her attitude wasn't very happy on set. I found all this out, by the way, from Tab Hunter. He told me this. It's not in any of his books. So in an he, interview you did with him, right? Oh, I, did I have inter- oh, yeah, I in? No, I interviewed him 100 years later. Okay. He told me this. <clears throat> excuse me. He told me this as friends, you know, having lunch and stuff, because I was very interested in Sophia Loren. I loved her. She was very beautiful. And he said it was a difficult uh, movie. And I shouldn't really tell anybody that they didn't get along, but they're both, well, he's dead. She's not. And she didn't write about it in her book. You know, she skipped that movie completely. So Sophia Loren was not happy with it. And you know what? For a woman of 26 years old, she looked more like 38 or 40. She was very old looking in that film, as you can see. Hub uh, Reynolds says, Ron, you're a legend movie star. That was awesome. And Bruce Glasgow says, you don't see trailers like that anymore. And it is fun, you guys. And you know what? Because um, I had never seen a black and white classic movie until I met Ron. Um, cause I didn't, I thought they were like terrible. Um, and now we watch Turner classic movies all the time and it really is, you learn a lot and the films are really, really, really good with really good stories and they have a beginning, a middle and end like Ron always says. So yep. you should definitely, uh, expand your boundaries and your horizons and watch Turner classic and, movies. And more about this film. Uh, we shot the net, we shot it at Long Beach, Long Island. I forgot what day it was, but then the next shoot we did was in Grand Central Station. That time I played a sailor because that's what they did. All the extras changed uniforms depending on what they needed for the shot. And I can be seen going up the escalator with my duffel bag over my shoulder. Unfortunately, <laughs> the duffel bag covered my face, but that was me. So I was very disappointed when my mother and I went to see the movie. My mother said, where the hell are you in this movie? I said, Ma, behind the duffel bag. She said, couldn't you put it on the other side? I said, no, Ma, the dresser put the duffel bag on my right shoulder. It's funny. Then we go to Cent- we go to Central Park, and we're shooting down by the lake. Now, Sophia Loren has to walk into the lake. Well, there's rocks and stones in the lake, and Sophia hurt her feet. So they immediately got a big ply board or some kind of a board, and they slid it underneath the water in the lake so the camera couldn't see it. And Sophia then walked on the ply board. But in doing so, the camera had to be moved now, and I'm walking with the girl, and I have my arm around her. She has her arm around my waist, and it was a good shot, except when they moved the camera because of the board, we were shot at a long distance. So I really never got to see myself, but it was a thrill to be in any scene with Sophia or Tab. They made movies then, three months to shoot a film, not nowadays, ten, 10 days. We had rehearsals, we had table read, not we, they. I wasn't, I wasn't big enough to have a table reading. But it was fun being on that wonderful set. And the thing that impressed me most was how people find out you're shooting in Central Park. They set it up about 6 in the morning, and we were shooting, I think, at 8 or 9. And by 10 o'clock, there had to be 100,000 people there hanging from trees on rock. I mean, I've never saw such a crowd of people. And when Sophia came out of her trailer, 
they went nuts. They began applauding and screaming, and the same thing with Tab Hunter. So that delays shooting, and that's money, and they didn't like that. So they had to tell the people to kindly be a part of the movie, and the part they want you to be is a mute. <laughs> So Dave Hughes says that his fav- one of his favorite movies is It's a Wonderful Life. Isn't your mom in that one? No, my mother was in... Um, oh, Miracle on 34th Street. Miracle on okay. 34th Street. Okay. My, my mother, <laughs> you saw the back of her head. <laughs> she was so upset. <laughs> but, you know, extras are not stars, and they're just there for atmosphere. And they don't want every extra looking in the camera because that's not what people do when they're busy. So they have extras, you know, walking with their backs and just to make it real. But poor. Yeah. Action. If you guys watch that TV show, burn notice, like I'm in like every episode walking around in the background. I'm in like 15 so he, episodes. He's another star. Yeah. I'm another star. Teresa Saban says her grandmother played piano in all the, in the silent movies in California back in the day. Well, my mother was in uh, children of the storm. I believe it was when my mother was 10 years old. She started as an actress. Her name was Jenny Gabriel. And, uh, my grandfather stopped it. He said, only Putan is uh, that way. And he told my grandmother, you bring her there, I'll kill you. Timatsu, he said, I'll kill you. I don't want my daughter near those people. They have red hair and they smoke cigarettes. And so tutti Putan, they're all whores. They said, my, my grandfather had a very bad opinion of show people. Oh, Twism says he's an extra in Evolution. That's a good movie. That was a funny movie. I think that's the one with David Duchovny, I think. Uh, and, well, you uh, know, it, it, being 19 and being in a film like that was quite a, a quite a, a, a challenge because there were people out there that were in the business years who wanted to be an extra. <laughs> so they want to know if they have extras in adult films. Rock Titan asked that, and I don't think they have extras in the adult films. I think they're called fluffers. <laughs> I've never made one. I've never made one, so I don't know. The fluffer's the guy who has to get the guy like ready to rock and roll. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, Scotty J, you can be the, the Scotty, guy. you can be the fluffer. <laughs> I'll be the fluffer. <laughs> That's just but, but, yeah, but you you don't even know what the fluffer does. You yeah, he does. He knows what a fluffer is. Yeah, I just said that what the fluffer does. I didn't hear that. What'd you say? The, he's the, got to get the the guy the guy who has to get the heart on for the freaking like star. If the fluffer's on set, who cares? A fluffer has to go down on the male lead to get him hard. That's what the fluffer does. Oh. Oh. <laughs> now, now do we want to give blowjobs in the, in the movies? All right. Now you change your mind, Scotty. Now Danielle's bit. going, oh, fuck yeah, that's for me. <laughs> <laughs> Danielle, you could be a fluffer. The only thing is, you'd make them come and then there's no more. So you'd have to fluff a little bit and then stop. But knowing you, greedy little thing. And Dave Hughes says he loves Gan- Gabrielle Anwar, who she's very nice, by the way, too, Dave. She was really nice. Um, Twism says again, he's too young. I don't know what we're talking about. That You don't know what a fluffer is, Twiz? <laughs> Are you in showbiz? That's, that's porno talk. We don't do that here. They probably do have extras, though, because they got to have, like, naked people just standing around if it's, like, an orgy scene. Or dressed people. If it's, you know, they're not always naked, are they, important? I don't know. I guess if you, yeah, usually they are. I think mm-hmm. they're all pretty naked. Anyway, so that was a little bit of what I did. But I did mostly work, was on stage for 45 years. I impersonated my buddy Jane Russell. And I sang in my own voice, and I danced, and I, I really looked like her. And I look like a woman, believe it or not. You know, as a guy, I'm such a a rough guy. But as it's a call acting, and it was great. And I never played the gay bars, maybe only for AIDS charity. Most of the clubs I played were supper clubs, uh, all straight people. Hub Reynolds wrote L M M F W C A O. I don't know what the hell is that. What does that stand for? Does anybody know? Laughing no, my ass. It's off. not that though. It's like something else. Hey, f- hey, what does that actually mean, you guys? L A L M M F W C A O. I don't even know. And you sh- and you know all those codes because you write them on bathroom walls. Well, yeah. How else am I supposed to get clientele? <laughs> 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 I love you. Uh, I, really I love, love this you, show. Didy. He's I really still do. laughing, but I don't know what it means. I love my Dee Dee. She's a good girl. And Teresa told Twism to use his imagination, and he says he doesn't want to use it. It might be too scary. 
Oh. That's a nasty chat. <laughs> I know. That's well, when it's always the busiest. So yeah, look, the thing's going so fast. People are writing wait, so wait, fast, wait. I can't even keep up. You said torpedo tits was in there. How come she's not? She's not it? there anymore. She had to go pick up her grandson. Uh, such an unglamorous life. So anyway, you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the little thing down memory lane. I tried to get the trailer for the Charlie's Angels episode where Ron is in an adult bookstore and they're like in a CD bookstore watching a porn film. Not at all. Uh, but I couldn't find it. Not so. a bookstore. Not a bookstore a film, an adult film. The, the show was called Catch a Falling Star, I believe, or something like that. And we shot it downtown L.A., all the way down on Hollywood Boulevard, there was a porno theater there for years. Now it's gone legitimate. And we shot it in there. Okay, another great role for me. The damn place was so dark, and I'm a detective, and Jacqueline Smith is playing like a hooker, making believe. Yeah, this is old Charlie's Angels, you guys, not yeah, new with, Charlie's with, Angels. With, 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 uh, with the Kate whole, Jackson, Jacqueline and, Smith. And, and what's her face? Cheryl Ladd? No, no. Farrah Fawcett? Farrah Fawcett. There you go. That's how old it is. And it was so dark, you know, another successful role for me. That's okay, because you're going to actually see him when Clown Fear comes out and Big Freaking Rat comes out. So there you go. Like what's to see? Who cares? They see you and your gorgeousness and all your oh, yeah, and my you and all your gorgeous and beauty. Oh, I sell it to the Marines. Twism says he thought the first <laughs> he thought that the first Charlie's Angels had Cameron Diaz. You are so young, Twiz. So so back in the eighties, there was a show called. Charlie's Angels, and that's the original show, and it starred Farrah Fawcett Majors, Jacqueline Smith, and Kate Jackson. And, and I was in one of the episodes when it, the show is in its first season. And it's not a movie. It's a TV series. TV Swiss. Show. It was on for like five years and had Farrah Fawcett, who back at the time was considered the most beautiful woman in the world, and she had a poster that sold like 100 million copies of her in a baby. And she suit. was a very, very um, warm, friendly very unpretentious girl. <laughs> and, she, she was just beautiful. I like Farrah a lot. And so when Farrah got wait, out of And Jackie, Jacqueline Smith, uh, she's a little testy at times. You know, she's a little nervous when she works, and she likes everything to go perfectly. If something goes off track a little bit, she gets very flustered. Uh, Kate Jackson wasn't in any of our scenes, so I never met Kate. It was in the end of the 70s, B. Claudia says, and... Um, Twism, you're right. She was the lady with the hair. And then when Farrah Fawcett Majors left the show because she didn't get along with everybody, they brought in Cheryl Ladd, of which Rock Titan says he's still shacking up with her. <laughs> she, I, I knew Cheryl because I lived on Spalding <clears throat> Drive opposite the Beverly Hills High in Beverly Hills. My neighbor next door was very good friends with Cheryl. My daughter, Deirdre, and this girl next door's son used to be playmates. So when Cheryl came over, her daughter, who's an actress also, her name is, I forgot, pretty name too. Uh, Jordan, lad. Jordan, Jordan. She's jo really popular now. Yeah, Jordan, Deirdre, and David Brown used to all play together. So that's how I got to meet Cheryl. And Cheryl was just as delightful as anybody could be and a very caring mother. Absolutely. So. Rock Titan says Jacqueline Smith was one of the most gorgeous brunettes I ever saw. And dude, she made so much money with her clothing line at Kmart back before Kmart. When Kmart was a big store and everybody went there before Walmart and stuff, she had her own clothing line and it made a freaking zillion million dollars. She was married to Dennis Cole. Yeah, and he came to one of my movie premieres mm -hmm. and he was People Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive one right. year. And I knew, I knew David really well. Dennis. Uh, Dennis. I'm, uh, Dennis Cole, I knew him very well. In fact, there's a picture of Deirdre sitting on his lap uh, outside of our garden at Halloween time dressed as a sunflower. And I said to, um, who was I? I was fixing Dennis up with somebody. Who was I fixing him up with? I don't know. I forgot now. Big star, too. He and, was great, though. He was fun. I did a movie, you guys, called The Morning Zoo, and he actually came to the premiere. It was a short, like a 10-minute movie or 15-minute movie, and it was a funny little movie, and he came to the premiere, and it was hilarious. He's a really nice guy. Well, I got to know Dennis, and we he would jog, I think, every other day at the Beverly Hills High. They had a wonderful running track, and he and I would meet on the bleachers, and then we'd go run for a while and just have a nice general conversation. Bruce Glasgow said he had that Farrah Fawcett poacher. She was in a one bikini bathing suit with huge boobs and a big smile. And not, he, she had, did not have huge boobs. She did too. Well, in the poster no, she, she does. she was not a large busted In the poster she did. That no, was the it was whole just thing. the bathing suit and the way they angled it. But Farrah Fawcett. Bruce Glasgow said he had that poster on his wall and he had to get rid of it because it got too spoogy. 
That's gross. <laughs> if, if Farrah Fawcett was a 34B, I'd eat my hat. That's about all. She was not a big, she was a tall girl, but she wasn't a big bone girl. She was a narrow, <laughs> one of those narrow people. Now they're calling him Spoogey Bruce. <laughs> yeah, Spoogey, Spoogey Bruce. And yes, she was with Ryan O'Neill. That's correct. Right. You got to like love but it. She, she was very nice, Farrah. I liked her. So here's what we're going to do, guys. We're going to take a music break. I don't know if you guys remember Matt Davis. He was on the show a couple years ago, and we used to go out with him in New York when we lived in New York to a bunch of cool events. He's a great, great singer and a good friend of ours, and he has a brand new single. It's called 5050. Danielle, do you and uh, Scotty J have that video? Uh, yeah, yes. How about you, Scotty J? Yep. Oh, Hub Reynolds said it was the nipples in the bathing suit that made the poster so popular. Yeah, the nipples. Um, so anyway, you guys, all right, on enjoy. So everybody, this is Matt Davis. This is his brand new music video for his brand new single. It's called 5050. Enjoy. Lucky struck me with lightning but gave me wings Tore through my clothes, tasty stings Sifting through spices, addicted enticing Dangerous highs, daring spotlight Breath is at first sight, treasure just coloring Will you take the chance to dance with me, baby? Chance, 50-50 Are we back? We are back. We are live. That was Matt Davis. Uh, the name of the song is 5050, and it's a great video. It's a great song, and I love his outfits. And he is a cool friend. He's a nice guy. We've hung out with him a lot, and he's got a damn good song here. Absolutely. And uh, I hope he makes a lot of money with it. And I don't know. Somehow we were asking. People are talking about shoe sizes. I'm not sure why. Bruce Glasgow says he's a nine, damn it. And then Twism wrote... Unless we're talking shoe size, then I'm a 12. I know, hate me. It's okay. <laughs> I'm a legit Not 13. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> I'm an 11 for, for real. 
<laughs> no, I'm not extending my foot. It's really not feet. You count thumbs. That's what I told him. Somebody said a man's penis is three times the length of his thumb. So go see. Oh, I'm not screwed. True. Not true. <laughs> not for me. Not, not true. <laughs> not, with me, maybe, but with Jimmy, no. Bruce Glasgow is asking to us, uh, you mean a child size 12 right before it gets to be a men's one? <laughs> <laughs> Stop it! Show today. They're all evil. <laughs> Teresa no, Saman says size doesn't matter. No, that's bullshit. But, um, <laughs> you know it doesn't. Sometimes you can have the biggest wang and just don't know how to do nothing. That's true. You don't know how to use yeah, it. Yeah, but the visual of a big wang. Hub is Reynolds is there. He told me he's nine. <laughs> oh, but she loves you anyway, honey. No, nine she, inches. Oh, I thought he was a size nine shoe. <laughs> Oh no one no wonder she married No wonder no wonder she's marrying him. Oh she she's gonna marry him. She wants to ride the pole. <laughs> ride the pony. I love that song. Ride Who is that? Genuine, pony. isn't that is that genuine who sings that pony song? Yes it is. Come. There you go. Rock Titan says he inspired the Indiana Jones bullwhip. <laughs> <laughs> what a bunch of fucking And Hub says shoe size isn't the word. No, but the other is big nose, big hose. <laughs> big feet, big meat. <laughs> <laughs> that's what, the, that's what the gay guys say in Palm Springs. You look at a guy's uh, feet. If he's got big feet, he's got big meat. And if he has a big nose, he has a big hose. Actually, next week, next week, if I can remember, we'll play that 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 pony song. I love that song. I do too. It's my favorite. It's a of good course song. It's your favorite because it goes up and down. <laughs> a male review in a couple of months. I'm about when to do that again. You're going what to a male day? review again? Well, what better way to start a Monday than uh, male strippers? That's all I'm saying. Best week ever. <laughs> <laughs> you got to like You're love too it. Much. You're too much. Too so, way too much. So we're going to do another. Um, now they, now Hub wrote that shit again. L-M-M-F-W-C-A-O. What the fuck does that mean? Laughing my ass off. No, laughing my meat Laughing my mother effing. Laughing my mother fucking ass off. What's WC? WC. I don't know what the hell. Wide it is. cock. Okay, laughing my mother fucking wide cock ass off. <laughs> that is just, that is so bad. That's and just made up. And if you look at Hub, he looks like a church goer. He looks like a little altar boy. <laughs> right, Hub? Yeah, he's an altar boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so wrong on so many levels. I love it. Uh, Why, you know Hub? <laughs> you you banged Hub? Did you bang <laughs> Hub? No. I mean, well, she's sp speaking with such authority. I mean, like, oh. She just knows all inches because she's had them all. So she knows That's every size. That's what I said. So she's had it with Hub. No, not with Hub, with all her don't, male strippers. Don't let Hub find out, uh, his fiance find out. We need to get some strippers. For, I mean, we need to get some police officers for you, Danielle, because you were really good with those. Mm. And they're and they're always like a lot of fun too. Well, because yeah. she she likes to be handcuffed. Well, duh. <laughs> and they got muscles, like they can manhandle. I'm not a lot of woman, but like I don't know, I they can manhandle. <laughs> they brought you. Actually, Rock Titan says that he was an altar boy for Halloween, and his wife was a priest. <laughs> <laughs> wife was a priest. Yeah. And they had an affair. Oh, Jane Doe just joined us when Jane Doe is Angela Joseph, everybody, from Clown Motel 2. So what's up, Angela? Hello, Angie, hello. Angie, baby. And Hub says he is a badass. And uh, so we're going to do a quick commercial, everybody. So we really appreciate everybody tuning in to us live on our home station of W4CY Radio with the fabulous Danielle and Scotty J. Silence, because they don't ever say anything. You guys, after I say that, you're supposed to go, "Ooh, yeah, yeah, woo, yeah, Thank awesome, you. fuck Do yeah!" It. All Take right, so, them. all right, we all go so into everybody, sort of a slight coma. We're like, we want to thank everybody for tuning in to our our live home station uh, here at W4CY Radio with the fabulous Scotty J and Danielle. Yeah, ooh, yeah, yeah, ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah there yeah. we go. That worked. <laughs> <laughs> you can also hear us on K4HD Radio in LA, Hit 1069 FM in New York, Jackalope Radio in St. Louis, iHeart Radio and iTunes, everybody. I'm I'm trying to get on the charts for the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, so please stream, download, 
uh, the shows and leave comments on iHeartRadio and iTunes. We're also on Stitcher, Audio Boom, SoundCloud, Podomatic, Spreaker, Apple TV, and Podbean. But we want to focus on iHeartRadio and iTunes. Also, you can watch us on television on Roku, Vimeo, YouTube, Salibra Media, VIP Television, and Comcast. Yay! And we're having fun, everybody. I hope you guys are enjoying our kind of like laid-back show today where we're talking about all kinds of like things. These shows always seem to do really well. And my blood thing, I mean, I'm at 62 steady beat. Whatever that is. My heartbeat is 62 according to this thing. That's good. Because this thing tells you your heartbeat. What is so it? Six, I don't know what it is. Shit. Oh, it's an eye. No, it's an eye. It's, it's my eye watch. I don't, I don't do this shit. This is Jimmy's toys. But it tells me, like right now, it went to 61. It's 60, 61, 62, which is very good. Before, it used to be 31, 32. That's not good. So I keep track now of my heartbeats. Well, I'm glad you're doing better. Absolutely. Yeah. All is good in the, in the world. What can you say? Are you going to uh, say good in the hood? No, I wasn't going to say that, but that works. What? Bruce Glasser did- said push it real good. <laughs> Push, oh, push good. in the bush. Uh, that's a song too. Push, push in the bush is a song, and push it real good is too. It's bump, 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 no, no, no. push we, it, no, no, push no. it good. No, no, please don't. My, rate, <laughs> my heart rate just went down. Salt and pepper. That's right. Jimmy sings. My heart rate goes down to like twelve. <laughs> <laughs> push, push in the bush. Oh god. Right. When he says push, push, your heart rate should go up. It's salt and, salt and pepper. And what was your song? Your song was push, push in the bush. Push, push in George Bush. Oh, no, not George Bush. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they Actually, everybody say. who said they were in love with salt and pepper, though. Salt and pepper is awesome, you guys. They were like, they are so fabulous, it's not even funny. I actually, like, love them. Do you, you really? don't know Push It? Oh, well, I'll try I, and get I, Push I It and Pony for next week. <laughs> I heard the song Push It. Push it real good. No, 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 no. That, that's not the, the one I heard was push it in, shove it in. Does it feel good? <laughs> What's that from? Danielle, she had that for her birthday song. Oh yeah, they like wrote a Christmas it. jingle. Everybody at her birthday started singing that. Michelle, Danielle, whatever the fuck your name is, push, push, shove it in. Feel good. I would make my family sing that too. <laughs> <laughs> of course you would, Danielle. We know my you. Grandma, would. R- my grandma would be like, "Oh my God, Danielle!" But I'd be like, "Listen, my birthday. Let's get on it." You. Be- you get I wonder how many you. sex songs have actually been written over time. We should Google that and find out. Uh, every Spice Girl song ever written. Yeah, there, there's a lot of sex ones with those. Actually, I like the Spice Girls. They're back, you know, but without without Posh Spice. Aqua. The, the best song. That that. I, wrote, I wrote was Santa Baby when I did ja- dra- drag as Jane Russell at Christmas time on a stage. Santa Baby, I'd like a guy six foot two, eyes are blue, wouldn't you? Santa Baby, send him down to me. Make his erection point in my direction. It would be perfection. You know, Santa baby. That's how I used to do it. People paid money for that shit. Well, we they got say, Tony yeah. Bennett. You got Tony Bennett on the set there, man. That's right. No, it's my voice is rough. It used to be higher, more feminine. But people paid to, see, to hear that shit. <clears throat> so hold on. They wrote Prince songs who have a lot of sex stuff in them. There's got to be a whole lot. There's got to be a whole lot of those songs oh, written the, about the sex. One, the one I learned when I was a kid. Oh, tell us that one because people will like that one. Oh, she burped and she farted and she shit on the floor and the wind from her ass knocked the knob off the door and the moon shone bright on the nipple of a tit. She carved her name in a bucket of shit. Have you got a heart on? Not yet. Are you going to get one? You bet. Who you going to give it to? Janet. Sung by the Hoa House Quartet Bafungu. <laughs> and I taught that to my daughters who just walked in. Come on, girls. <laughs> <laughs> so just, that's Leslie and Deirdre sing- walking into the house. <laughs> we're singing Dirty Song. Wait, 
my daughter to come here. Oh, you come sing it for us. She'll be oh. coming around the mountain. Do when she comes, she'll be coming. You broke. She landed in the grass with a p- spoke up her ass. And it, I say punctured by a spoke. See, I taught my girls nice things. I just we did that, that one. <laughs> so there's no such song as cold as a wind. My daughters are just as weird as we've we just are. evolved into an R-rated PBS show. A bunch of cursing Muppets. <laughs> My what? daughters forgot I it's Wednesday. <laughs> I know. Isn't that funny? What are you going to do? So you guys, in, t- in 10 minutes, we're going to have our first guest. So we're going to waste 10 more minutes. And, uh, and then we're going to play a song. And we're going to get our next guest, J.P. Castillo, on the line. Um, um, in the meantime... Um, I'm not sure why they're here, but they're here visiting. They're here to see their daddy. Uh, they need- oh, okay. Wait, uh, hang on, hang on. Family Feud, you're putting all your Halloween shit in our garage? No, they're putting the food from their party in our house. Oh. <laughs> Drama here on the Jimmy Star Show. Okay, anyway, all right, so we're done with it. Come on, we got to keep going because people don't give a shit about that. <laughs> Oh, okay, oh, the, good. Oh, you gave me these already. We have these. Okay, those you have doubles. Oh, okay, go. Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, all right, you guys. See you later. Bye. See you later. Twism says best best show ever. Way. Okay, we're not going anywhere for a while. Um, okay, so Twism says best show ever. And by the way, everybody, Twism just released a brand new album called Dreams to Reality. And he's got one song in there called Superstar that, uh, talks about me so you should definitely check it out and listen to it when he comes on the show we're going to play it play the video for everybody no the song that i like is if i roll on my back i can pull my legs up and do myself well, how's it go i'm doing myself <laughs> pull on marilyn manson and remove a rib <laughs> do i look that fat in person Look at me in the screen. I look like I have a five fifty-five inch waist. No, you don't. You look beautiful. No, I have a thirty-four inch waist. Look at my waist. You gotta like love it. Why does the camera? Oh, B's back. B, B's yeah. been kind of quiet. Oh no, she says I agree. And pup B, you guys is is so prim and proper that she's not used to uh, all this dirty language. So we love you, B, and we love she, that you're participating in our filth. <laughs> and, she, and given another couple of weeks, she'll be just like us. <laughs> It's different, like when Bruce Glasgow, like when he ch- chimes in, since we know now we're calling him Spoogey Bruce, uh, we, we know that he can handle it all. And remember, folks, birds of a feather flock together. That's right. So we need 50 million people to download this show so we can get on we iTunes. Can get flocked. <laughs> so we could get flocked. Everybody is everybody is totally like a trash mind anyway. Oh, you guys see too? Look who joined us, Astro. Astro has joined the, the fold. And Astro's a pig. He like licks himself all the time. No, he doesn't. My dog is not a pervert. You know Teresa saying? says she's happy she found her peeps. <laughs> you got to like love it. You got to have fun, you guys. So this has been a lot of fun just sitting around and shooting the shit. And I love that everybody's in the chat room. This is probably the busiest chat room we've ever had in a long time because it goes by so fast you can't even like keep track. But uh, uh, Angela just said hi to Astro Puppy. And he, Astro Puppy is doing well. And if you guys go on YouTube later today, if you want to watch the video, um, I just put up the video for the FMs when they were going to their sex club uh, on YouTube today. And later on tonight, the uh, video that we did um, with Felissa Rose and Sadie Katz last week will be up so you can see the beautiful, beautiful ladies. And then you can also listen to it on iHeartRadio and iTunes because that's where we're going with it all, you guys. iHeartRadio and iTunes. What do they call that yoga movie, Scotty? I don't know what yoga movie you're talking about. Look at how he knows I have an incision. He wants to kiss my incision. There you go. The other one, too. I don't know what they mean by yoga movie. Bruce, what are you talking about? Spoogey, tell us. (laughs) I said that I took yoga so that I could do myself, and now they want to know. Oh. Yeah. Uh, you know damn oh, well. What do they call that yoga move? Oh, <laughs> it's called the Zoomy move. <laughs> he said if he could do himself, he would never leave the house. <laughs> Who said wow, that? Okay. Spoogie. Spoogie oh, Spoogie. tripod over here practically can. <laughs> that's not nice. What do you mean that's not nice? <laughs> oh my god! This yoga move. All the secrets to come out. So now we're gonna call him Spoogy Yoga Move Bruce. <laughs> 
<laughs> you gotta like love it. It's called Blow Yourself. The mind of its own. Yeah. This, this is a very little dog who's learning a lot of dirty stuff. Oh, but he's a pig already. No, he's not. Yeah, he is. Not, you're a pig. He's not a pig. I'm a pig, too. He's my boy. We all get along he's so well because of it. Kiss. Give Daddy a kiss, you big cute. You gotta like him. That dog is so cute. Bruce Glasgow is so uh, so jealous that, that you can almost do yourself and he can't. <laughs> so he could do me. <laughs> yeah. And make it easy. <sighs> Oh, anyway, you guys. So this is like this is fun. Let's let's give out some other like, quick shout outs. You guys, our blog, JimmyStarsWorld.com, doing very well. Um, it's getting lots of hits. We do all kinds of entertainment news. So please check it out, JimmyStarsWorld.com. If you guys need PR services, Eileen and I uh, are the 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 co-founders of World Star PR. We work with all kinds of great superstars. If you need uh, press and publicity for whatever you're working on, we work with authors, singers, uh, hip hop artists like Twism. Um, we work with CC Peniston. We work with movie makers, actors, celebrities, models, you name it. Uh, we get you press. Movie stars like me. Movie stars like Ron. That's right. And uh, so you can check out World Star PR. All the information is, is on the link if you go to jimmystarsworld.com. You also have links to every place you can listen to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. And, uh, and then there's n music news, horror news, film news, television news, just news and entertainment. It's all about entertainment. Amazing how boring you can be when you speak so much. Oh, well, what are you going to do? They don't think so. Because oh, they're polite. Bruce Glasgow says he's going to go get the largest cucumber he can find in practice, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get a, You got to get his zucchini. Oh, he says zucchini. <laughs> that's <laughs> We're going to have to tone it down, too, because we don't know the guest that's coming on. So we'll have and to. And I like, know that I'm going to hear from iHeart. No, I heard. You watch. This is gonna. This show. This show is gonna shoot up to the well, top somebody of my else, heart. You know, years ago, I heart used to say too many f words. Now they must have changed their CEO because they love our filthy shit. Well, that's no, because when we first got on, there weren't. They didn't have a whole bunch of podcasts on there. Now they have four hundred fifty thousand of them, and they're all. I mean, some of the some of the popular some of the most popular podcasters show. One of them is called like, like, like. People we say fuck to or something. I mean, like the, the shows that are popular are just unbelievable. So we started a trend, folks. Eight years ago, we started to do it like it really is. Like people are when they're hanging out, having drinks and fun. And that's what we are. When you come on the Jimmy Star Show, it's like you were sitting in our living room with us. No, and don't change it because I'll beat you up. I really will beat you until you bleed. Up. That's what you always say. I will beat say. you till you bleed. Why? What were you going to say? We are in my kitchen. Oh, kitchen, whatever. Having coffee and Entenmann's crumb cake in Brooklyn. Absolutely. Well, maybe not in Brooklyn, but... In Brooklyn. You well, got to like, love I will it. pull your nostrils out and make them wide. Yes. So how about this, Scotty J? Does it look like um, J.P. Castillo is on the line? I don't know. Let's I'm, check it out and see, and if it is... True. He probably Actually, Teresa said, says eating Entenmann's crumbs. C C Castillo oh, love, is online, wait, wait. yes. All right, so here's what Wait, we're going to do. Huh? Who, who said that? Teresa. She's in Florida. Ter Teresa, I love you. That's the best part of the Entenmann's crumb cake is eating the big chunks of crumb with the powdered sugar on it. Now I must go out and purchase. We don't even get that here in California. I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> I know. When we, go to, when we go to New York, we're going to get it. And then once we get it, we're going to bring it back. And I want devil dogs. I'm bringing devil dogs back. I so can't. Rod today, like he's on a whole new level. That's <laughs> Wait, who who loves be devil dogs? Anybody out there? We can't find those here either. They're I on mean, the East Coast, but not the West is, Coast. California's missing a lot. I'm going to call Donald Trump, and I'm going to ask Donald Trump to send me devil dogs and Entenmann's crumb cake. He's not going to be around much longer. <laughs> no, but until, before he goes, I, he might have the power to get me some crumb cake. She likes to eat them off the table. <laughs> where, where else? I mean, that's how you. Rock eat Titan them. says he's got a devil dog for you. <laughs> for, for who? Not for me. Oh, Ian Smith just joined us. What's up, Ian? How you doing? Ian Smith is part of the whole Sumner Twins talent with Angela. Hi, it's nice to see you. Here's what we're gonna do, you guys. We're gonna play Jason Prince. Wouldn't it be good? Um, once we get the video over with, by that time, hopefully, we're gonna be on the line with JP Castillo, and um, and we're gonna go from there. Do you guys both have the Jason Prince video? Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. How yep. about you, Scotty yep, Jay? All right. Cool. On enjoy. All right, everybody. This is Jason Prince, a very good friend and, and someone who's been on the show many good times. And uh, this is his single, Wouldn't It Be Good? Enjoy. Wouldn't it be good? 
I got it bad. You don't know how bad I got it. You got it easy. You don't know when you got it good. It's getting harder. Just keeping life and soul together. I'm sick of fighting, even though I know I should. The cold is biting through each and every nerve and fiber. My broken spirit, it's frozen to the core. I don't wanna be here no more. Wouldn't it be good to be in your shoes, even if it was for just one? You must be joking. You don't know a thing about it. You've got no problem. I'd stay right there if I were you. I got it harder. You couldn't dream how hard I got it. Stay out of my shoes if you know what's good for you. The heat is stifling, burning me up. I'm inside. The sweat is coming through each and every pore. I don't wanna be here no more. We are back. We are live. All right. Before we introduce our next guest, we're going to make sure we can hear him. JP, say something so we can make sure everybody can hear you. What's going on, everybody? What's up? There we go. All right, everybody. Now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Super talent. What? I waved and made a sound. That's what I'm here for. I know, but not until I get done doing it. Now we got to do oh, it all over did again. I step on- <laughs> did I step on your line? All right, everybody. Now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star with... Uh, See, now I'm all flustered. All right, here we go. All right, everybody, now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, the super incredibly talented J.P. Castillo. Hello and welcome to the show. <laughs> What's up, everybody? How you, how you guys doing? Absolutely terrific. Let me introduce you to everybody, starting off with my cool, outrageous man about co-host, Mr. Ron Russell. Did you ever hear a phonier introduction than that one? <laughs> that was so rehearsed and so... I use the same introduction all the time. It's, it's a bore. Anyway, say hi. Hey, how you doing? Nice to have you on the show. That's a real McCoy one. I know, but we need it for Comcast and all the people. So we've got a Comcast, chat room. I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I bought it. I'm good. There you go. See, he bought it. Meanwhile, I want to see that jacket. What size is it? <laughs> you know what? It's, a, it's about a, I think it's a medium, possibly. No, I need extra large. Yeah. <laughs> all right. well, we'll I, love, I love it. I absolutely love the stuff that's going on. Thank you. 
Thanks. So hold on. We're gonna... Let me see the back. Anything on the back? Oh, no. It's got a lot going on in the back. Oh, just turn around turn real quick it. and then come I turn love... around again. Oh, oh there wow, we go. Los Angeles. Yay. Yeah, it's, got, it's got a lot of... I like the flowers. I like yeah. the flowers. Where, where did you get that jacket? I don't know. Somewhere... I don't remember. Uh, it's a beautiful, all. beautiful jean top. That with jeans and boots I go anywhere. That's funny. Everybody in the chat room is loving it too. So let me in it. Let me I in it. I love it. It's a beautiful. Well, he's a good looking guy, so shit on him would look good. That's true. But hold on. <laughs> so hold on. We're going to introduce you, everybody. Hungry. We're going to first uh, introduce you to Danielle, who's behind the boards at W4CY Studios and in playing, Florida. And she's playing with herself as she's looking at you. Danielle, say hi to JP. She's a pervert. Be careful of her. Yeah. Don't give her your phone number because she'll be calling you at night saying dirty things. <laughs> you promise? Yeah. <laughs> there you go, Danielle. There's your opening, babe. Woo! <laughs> All right. So Let then we. Good time, honey. <laughs> <laughs> so then we've also got the man behind the video boards. He's in Philadelphia. He's Scotty J. Scotty J, say hello. Yo, 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 Mr. Castillo. What's up? What's good, man? Thanks there for having me. And then we've got a chat room. Right now we have uh, uh, Canada, Germany, France, United States, UK. I don't know, a whole bunch of countries. There's a bunch of people in it. Just say hi to everybody in the chat room. What's up, everybody? Thanks for joining us. There you go. You got to like love it. All right. So this is JP Castillo, you guys. He's never been on the show. He knows nothing about us. We were totally like talking about sex shit for the whole like hour before you came on the show. And, uh, and, and you rebounded really good with the whole Danielle thing. So I think you're going to fit in perfect here. <laughs> we, we, we normally are a very clean show. We start off with religious, you know, uh, conversation, oh, yeah, and then right. we go into, you know, good s religious music. Yeah. Uh, Somehow I, mean, I don't believe you. Oh, <laughs> I oh, wouldn't either. Give me the fucking jacket. <laughs> <laughs> So everybody, this is JP Castillo. You can follow him on. He's really big on Instagram, Instagram and Twitter. He's at JP C A S T I L L O Music. He is a superstar. He's born in San Jose, Costa Rica, um, but now he lives in L A. Right? I, I think. Are you right. in L A? I'm guessing. Yeah, you're yeah, in LA. yeah. I grew up in L A. Yeah. Um. He's he's had some great career highlights. He's performed alongside the Jacksons, J Lo, who handpicked him to go on tour with her, Frankie J, who I'm a huge Frankie J star, like. Uh, I mean, J Star. I'm a huge Frankie J fan. I think Frankie J is freaking like awesome. Um, yeah, so I think it's great. all really cool. And you have a new album, a uh, relatively new album, and and we're gonna play a video from it in a little bit. But I don't know how to actually pronounce it correctly. Um, so I thought you would tell us the name of the album, and that way I'd hear how you say it, and then I would know, you know, how to pronounce it. Well, it's a single, and it's called Jugar al Amor. Yeah, and I would have never got that one right. Jugar <laughs> al Amor. And what does that actually mean in English? Playing at love. Okay. You're like a total like stud too, right? Like you got the girl. Like I watch video footage of you like in doing shows that you're doing. And you have like all the like 13 to 25 year old girls practically like throwing their panties at you. Ho hopefully not the 13 year old ones. Okay. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's kind of pr prison bait. <laughs> yeah. Don't my get me in trouble here, guys. Yeah. My daughter, Deirdre, loves Costa Rica. She goes all the time because jo Joaquin Phoenix, his dad, lives there. And she, you know that? You know who Joaquin know Phoenix is? Yeah, he lives in Costa Rica. And she goes down to visit him because she was good friends with Joaquin and, oh, cool. and his, Joaquin's family. Uh, they're always in Costa Rica. It's one of their favorite places. It's a great place. Well, I have a very good friend of mine. She's from Costa Rica, and it's a cute story. She lives so far in the jungle that it takes three hours to get to the ocean. So you know what she does? She flies to Miami because it's quicker to fly to Miami to go to the beach than to go to the beach in Costa Rica to the jungle. <laughs> That's a little bit extreme, I think. But okay. Well, she's, she's also she, rich. She's a multi, <laughs> right. She's a multimillionaire. She's invited him us to her home. She said, when you come, you don't do a thing. I have many servants, she said. They do many servants. Oh, many servants, and she's loaded. I mean, this woman is one of the richest women in Costa Rica, and she's an absolute doll. And I call her Carmen Miranda because she looks like Carmen Miranda, but you don't know who Carmen Miranda is. <laughs> Do you know I, who Carmen Miranda is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Chica, chica, chica. Yeah, mama, yo quiero. Mama, yo, yeah, you got it. You got <laughs> it. You got <laughs> it. You got <laughs> it. 
You That's, got it. First of all, one thing I find is really cool about you, um, because we we ha- we bring on uh, you know entertainers and performers all the time, and and a lot of them uh, don't have like a formal education. You're actually formally educated in music, right? You went to college, studied it, um, yeah. and now you're out living the dream. Yeah, yeah. I come from a musical family too, so I, I kind of got it from all kind of angles. I mean, my dad's a, a he was a very recognized drummer in Costa Rica, nationally recognized jazz uh, Latin jazz drummer. My mom, a singer, she made a career for herself in L.A. as well, um, you know, singing, recording, touring. What, what, are, what are their names? Give us their names. Ileana, Ileana Garcia and my dad, Juan Castillo. And, um, yeah, they're both musicians in the industry, you know, doing all kinds of stuff, tours, recordings with artists and everything. And uh, they had their own their own projects as well. And I just I was in and out of studios, rehearsals at the house. It was all my uncle. He's he's in Costa Rica and he's uh, known as one of the top musicians in Costa Rica. He's a, the the concert master violinist for the symphony, and so I just kind of have all kinds of musical influences. So growing up, it was it was kind of a no brainer for me, and I did want to go to school and and kind of acquire more of the uh, formal, like you're saying, formal you know education in music. I had a lot of the street knowledge from growing up in the in the business just with my parents and kind of seeing it up close but i did so you, yeah so you didn't have to worry though then like because most kids who want to be musicians are terrified to tell their parents that they want to like go into like music or entertainment or something because most parents wouldn't yeah. be very supportive but your family was probably pretty supportive since they're all in it they were very supportive um we all we all kind of took it um we all I don't want to say we took it for granted but we we kind of took it as just like the obvious thing like yeah of course like it's a given music, you know Almost to the point where, you know, I didn't, a lot of my training and formal actual like drum lessons and things like that, I I didn't even do that with my dad. I did it with other people because it was just too obvious at the house, too, it it was, it was unspoken, you know what I mean? It was more like just absorbing all the knowledge and information around me and and my dad would pass down information to me, but um, it it just became a, a whole family tradition. I love it. So here's what I want to do. Uh, Being the parent of two daughters, I understand that when your children follow your footsteps, it is probably the greatest uh, honor and feeling. Compliment. So I'm sure that your parents are thrilled with the fact that you followed in their footsteps. Yeah, I I, I appreciate you saying that. They, They are. They're very supportive. And they, you know, anything I release i anything on social media anything like that they're always reposting and sending it to people and yeah they, they're very proud <laughs> i love it so here's uh, what i want to do though know, real quick y- y- proud of you as a musician better than a jailbird <laughs> <laughs> right like so many kids are jailbirds and i feel sorry for the parents because they have to suffer the shame and the and the worry and the, and all that stuff good good you you're a good kid and you're a good image and I like what you project. You project love for the family, which is very Latin because I'm Italian, so I'm Latin also. And yeah. we, la- we Latins love the family more than, yeah, yeah, any- yeah. more than anything. Actually, you know, everybody... La familia, la familia, la familia. La familia, la familia. Yeah, you know what? And I, I, had, my, di tutto. <laughs> I had my little moments, my little episodes um, in ninth grade, was it? Eighth, eighth and ninth grade where I was starting to hang out with the wrong crowd and you know, out here in some of the gang areas of LA and stuff like that. And um, I had a, you know, at the end of the day, you, you, your parents can raise you and teach you, but you, you have to make your own choices as well. So um, I was blessed to, to just keep, there was always people around me that, that were good influences. And, and I was, you know, I was brought up in church as well. And so I had like some, some people that, that always kind of looked out for me. I love it. And your parents had so much to do with it. Early, early influence before you even recognize the fact that you were being influenced by your parents. It's exactly. early. It's, it's by age three years old that we determine what the person's going to be as they grow up. Isn't that amazing? At three years old, they can tell. Yeah. So everybody in the chat room loves the background. Lots of compliments. This guy's a total package. Uh, good yeah, head on his, his shoulders. What's his music so like? That's what, that's what I wanted to do. So I, here's what we're going to do. I've never heard your music. I'm honest. So, I don't lie on our show. Never lie. People love me for that. So here's so, what we're going to do. Wait, wait, wait. Is it Latin beat music? It's Latin music. Yeah, oh, yeah. I love Very it. Latin influenced. It's, well, it's, got a, it's got all my influences in there. I, then you I'm going to love it. Because yeah, I, I hope so. I can, do the, I can do the rumba, the samba, the mambo, the cha-cha. 
I'm a Latin dancer from when I was a kid. I'm 80 years old. So when I was a kid, I used to dance all the Latin, mostly Puerto Rican. Wait, wait, and wait. I, Did you just say you're 80? I will be 80 in May. Are you serious? Yeah, he's well, serious. Unfortunately, yeah, I'm serious. I wish Yo, I I'll give you this jacket. You give me what you're taking because. You know, <laughs> you know what? He doesn't great, take man. anything. I don't take anything. No drugs, no drinking, no like crazy. But anyway, and doesn't put soap on his face. He, no. he washes it with olive oil. Olive oil, oil. Uh, no soap, olive really? oil. Really? All I my life. The ancient Romans didn't have soap. Yeah. What they used to do was put olive oil on their body and get a stick and they rubbed the oil off the body with a stick and that's how they took baths and uh, olive oil is a good anti uh oxidant it gets rid of body odor it gets rid of germs on your body and when it penetrates the skin it revitalizes the skin well yeah, i mean you're spanish you know what olive oil is i don't have to tell you about olive oil that's i mean we, that, that's, we, that's we drink great. we drink it but where i was no. going with this story was when i was a kid there was a Fabulous, fabulous Puerto Rican group uh, headed by uh, Tito Puente. You know the name Tito Puente? Everybody knows Tito Puente. Of course. Yeah. My yeah, mom I've worked met, with him, yeah. Oh, I've met Your him Your mother too. worked with Tito Puente? Yeah, yeah. Loved him. I went to every single room that he was playing in. I danced till I dropped dead. Tito Puente. And the other one I loved, uh, what was his name? Another Spanish guy. He was fabulous. He was Cubano. He wasn't... Uh, Puerto Rican. Well, hold on. Let's go back because I want people to hear his music. Yeah, well, I want so, to hear his music. So too, here's what I'm we're going to do. Danielle, Danielle and Scotty J, do you guys have the music video? Hello? What if I said no? Yeah. No, no. just tell we me got it. We got it. You buy it on the spot. That's All right, it. So what You're I'm fired. Gonna do, I got it. So I, so I don't pronounce it with my, my terrible accent. What we're going to do is have JP... Uh, uh, announce the video. It's just the video for the song that you just talked about a second ago. Ugar Al Amor. Right. <laughs> Whatever the hell, I don't know. How, to... how do you say it? Jugar al amor. Jugar al amor. Jugar al amor. Okay, anyway, you're going to... So here's sure. what you're going to do. Say who you are, the name of the song, and at the end, say enjoy, and that's going to be their cue to hit the video for everybody to watch it. All okay, right? I'm happy to introduce my latest single to you. My name is JP Castillo, and this song is called Jugar al amor. Enjoy. Very good. That was... Ya nada de ti me impresiona, ey. Juegas con todos y los ilusionas, ey. Yeah. Pero conmigo no te va a funcionar, no, no, no. Ese jueguito yo me lo inventé, yeah. Mírame a la cara y dime qué se siente saber Que yo estoy dispuesto a jugar tu juego Solo dime si lo tomas, porque si no hasta luego, baby Si apareces de la nada y te vas de repente, baby Solo mírame a la cara y dime qué se siente saber Que yo estoy dispuesto a jugar tu juego Podemos jugar toda la noche corrido y mañana me despido y me llamas cuando sientas que ya no aguanta y quieres conmigo y te saco los semidos, pero por favor de mí no te enamores, que ya no estoy para un mundo de colores, ahora estoy viviendo momentos mejores, solo entonces hay compromiso, así que no me llores. ¿Qué quieres? Si apareces de la nada y te vas de repente, baby, solo mírame a la cara. A jugar tu juego Solo dime si lo tomas Porque si no hasta luego, baby Si apareces en la nada Y te vas de repente, baby Solo mírame a la cara Y dime que se siente saber Que yo estoy dispuesto A jugar tu juego Solo dime si lo tomas Porque si no hasta luego, baby Si quieres 
nos encontramos ¿Qué quieres? Si apareces de la nada y te vas de repente, baby Solo mírame a la cara y dime qué se siente saber Que yo estoy dispuesto a jugar tu juego Solo dime si lo tomas, porque si no está luego Tu juego, solo dime si lo tomas, porque si no, hasta luego, baby. Oh, we're back, right? We're right, back, Scotty J. We're back, we're back, yep. The chat room like loves it. It's freaking amazing. Um, they want you to tell them the name of it again because everybody wants to go get it, so I'll let you tell them the name. <laughs> Jugar al amor. And you spell that, you guys, J U J J U G A R, and then A L, and then A M O R. So that way you can find it. Yeah, go to my uh, YouTube channel, youtube.com backslash J P Castillo. You'll you'll find all my my music, my videos, and different stuff like that. And remember, J is silent in Spanish. What do you mean, J is silent? The J, J is never. There's no. No, his name's J P. That's a that, H that's, is silent. An Italian J is silent. Really? Yeah. My mother was Jenny, and my father spelt it G, no J, because the Italian alphabet doesn't have J. Meanwhile, that's a good song. You know, another name I'm going to throw at you. Hey, you're teaching me a bunch of things today, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. You know who Prez Prado was? Yeah. That sounds, yeah. Uh-huh. You got Mama. style. You got style, baby. You're going to be, this song is going. Thank you. It's good. It's excellent. Thank excellent. you. Excellent. So everybody in the chat now, room. Wait a minute. What are you speaking? Pure Spanish or dialect? Because I understood some of it. It's it's Spanish. It's a it's a pretty much pure Spanish. Yeah, sure. it's got a, a couple of maybe little uh, slang little right. things in there. Yeah. But um, you know, I understand Spanish. It's similar to Italian. You know. Yeah. So I can hear. You know, it's a lovely song. Good beat. I like the rhythm. I like your voice. I like the way you handle the whole thing. You didn't overdo it, and you didn't underdo it. You gave it the right amount of energy and the right sound. This song is going to sell. And everybody, we have hundreds. And we, everybody in the chat was talking about how hot you are. <laughs> yeah. And don't forget, we have over four and a half million people watching right now. Not now, but over through the whole week. Oh, over the whole week. Because they're coming. I don't know how they're coming. But they're coming. So you they say you're a great dresser. Um, I no, wanna... the dressing is not. Because that jacket looks awful on him. Yeah, it should, should be on you. Should be on, it should be on me. Hang on. Let me go. So the chat room loves it. And there's all these different countries in the chat room. Uh, I want to say, I don't know who the female is who's in the video with you, but... But she's, she's drop pretty, dead gorgeous. Pretty girl. Um, she's yeah, absolutely she's really beautiful. Pretty. Your girlfriend? Um, is she your yeah. girlfriend? She's great. You know, we're gonna have to keep that a, a mystery. Okay. Oh, go screw yourself. <laughs> <laughs> And also, so like I hear, uh, I don't know who all your influences are, but like if I was going to compare you, I think you sound kind of like a cross between like if you were like the mix like Mark Anthony and Bruno Mars, you're kind of like a uh, like in between the two of the two. When he started, and they're both fantastic. And I actually think Mark Anthony, first of all, I think My Baby You is one of the greatest ballads ever recorded, like ever, and it's a Mark Anthony song. It's one of my favorite songs in life. Yeah. And uh, and I think that. I think you've you've created a, a niche for yourself that's really wide open, you know, for like a young, good-looking, talented guy to come in and 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 start to take over, you know, because there isn't a whole lot of people in your space, um, and especially not who who are as talented no, as you are. It's sad. In the 1950s, Latin music was all over the place. If you went to a dance hall or a dance place, they played jazz, they played Latin, they played foxtrot, they played all kinds of music. Yeah. Today, the only time you'll ever hear, and it's not even Latin because it's the Mexican dialect, which is so different from Spanish. The, I, I don't understand any Mexican dialect when they speak Spanish. It's a, it's a, it's a language of its own. And that's the only music that we hear in California is the Mexican kind of, you know, sound. Regional, yours, yeah. yeah, yours is regional. Real, yes, that's how it, we couldn't figure that's that out. That's a good word. Your music is, is like the music from the 50s where everybody can enjoy, not only Hispanics or Latin people, even the Irish, you know. <laughs> do, do you actually, do you sing, do you sing, uh, do you sing any uh, songs in English? Like I went through your YouTube and most, all your popular videos are, are in Spanish. 
because you got you got videos yeah. with a zillion views. Yeah, but we need Spanish music. No, I do. I I have um. I'm actually what I'm working on right now is stuff that is in English, and some other stuff in Spanish. I'm 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 kind of not. I'm not. What I don't want to do is kind of corner myself or pigeonhole myself into people thinking that it's I'm, I'm only this or I'm only that. But okay, yeah, you can do it all. Like, yeah, I, I, I'm bilingual. I speak English. I speak Spanish. I sing in both languages, and I've performed, you know, for for both, you know, speaking uh, English speaking audiences, Spanish, and in both in both. It's like what you're saying. It's music that's for for the whole world, not just for one. Everyone, culture. yeah. yeah. And was, I wish you guys would bring back the dance. You know, the the dance of Hispanic music, not just the listening to, because I remember the fun that I had doing the mambo i mean what dance was more fabulous than the mambo you know or one two three yeah. together cha 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 da, 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 da. Yeah. one two three together cha 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 la da di da yeah. la da da i Man, love you, that i, I love you guys are gonna really enjoy the stuff i'm working on they don't do it anymore so you'll be the first one to do it they yeah. play music that you don't fucking understand. It's not music <laughs> that, that, not we, that we could dance to. I want to go dancing Latin again. I loved it. Love da- Don't you love dancing Latin? Do you dance? Do, does anybody dance Oh, I'm Latin? sure he dances. No, oh, absolutely, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. There, there's a, there's I, a I, don't mean that Mexi- I don't mean the Mexican hat dance. I mean like a real mambo, cha-cha. Yeah, yeah, there's still a lot of that. People, people it's kind of resurfacing and people love to, to just dance to Latin music. It's very sexy. There's a lot of bachata, you know, in, in, right now and a lot of bachata clubs and, and okay. stuff like that and it's it's all resurfacing. So yeah. And, I, and think what, gonna, I think you're going to really really enjoy the stuff I'm working on. I hope so because I like what I saw here. I think already. too, yeah, you're going to Wait, wait, hang on. And the rumba was such a beautiful dance, the rumba. Do you know what the rumba is? Rumba. Yeah, no, it's sure. pronounced rumba. Okay, anyway, let's keep I, going. I wish people like you say uh, rumba. rumba. <laughs> Latins like me say rumba. No, it's actually, you're bringing up all this stuff, and, and something I read on the internet about you is that uh, for a while at least, or for several seasons, you were the featured singer on Dancing with the Stars band. That's right, yeah. So like yeah. you know, so you're familiar with all the dances because you're like singing when they're like doing all that stuff. Exactly. <laughs> but they're, but exactly, they're, doing, yeah. they're doing theatrical dancing. They're not doing class. They do rumbas. And yeah, but, but it's very, very uh, competition. Ballroom. Ballroom. It's ballroom, yeah. I'm talking about just going. He to means a, the really sexy salsa stuff. The street dance, like yes, the street dance, yeah. The street dance, yeah. yeah. They, they, they flip each other around. I'm talking about regular people just getting up there and feeling the rhythm of the music, yeah, and 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 getting into it, and your hips and your shoulders move, and it and it's a very a wonderful feeling, uh, doing a cha cha or or a mambo. You feel like you're really dancing. Anybody too who's ever Not been like the shit they do too. Anybody who's ever been to Disney's California Adventure back in the day, uh, I read online that your first professional gig was playing Aladdin in the Aladdin Music Spectacular at Disney's California Adventure. That's uh, right. Which, which I mean that, that 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 that's really singing. I mean that's like a great gig to get yourself started in. Uh, you didn't start. I mean most people start like in these like really shitty little things, and you started in a big spot right off the bat. It was amazing. It was a it, that was a, a really dope experience. I mean, I I I, I was challenged in in the uh, acting department. It was very acting heavy, you know. And and we had some amazing people in the cast. The director that was directing it at that time, and and we had Broadway um, people people that had been on Broadway, starred in Broadway shows, and uh, the guy playing Jafar. Um, I mean, we had so so many amazing talented actors and here i was you know green as it gets and so yeah it was it was a really really cool thing to just jump and you're playing the lead as green as it gets playing the actual like lead which is pretty freaking like sick now you work with j-lo right did i get that right right? yes what's j-lo like she's she's exactly how she looks like how you see her on tv just a, a super hard worker um got like the the craziest work ethic um very professional, very, very on top of, of her game. You know, she knows what she wants to accomplish. She knows how to accomplish it. And, and for me, it was just, again, just another very, like, very, very good um, learning experience is to draw from her inspiration and, and just see, like, what it takes to be at her level and, and for, for decades. I mean, she's been... Yeah, she's, decades. She's been consistent, she's, yeah. She's a very beautiful Puerto Rican girl who can really act and, and really sing. Gorgeous. 
Oh yeah, she's gorgeous. She's one of she my favorite uh, favorite celebrities, like on the planet, and and that movie Made in Manhattan. Have you ever seen Made in Manhattan? The movie. It's yeah. like the gr- it's like the greatest movie, like the greatest like love story movie like ever in like the history of movies. <laughs> <laughs> we know a few people who know her, and they yeah. all said she's very. Yeah, everybody uh, says like she's you, fabulous. Like you said, very, very serious about her work, but very nice, yeah. very sweet. Yeah, she's great. She's yeah, she's beautiful. You know, she's she's just got it. She's she's who she is, and you, and you see why. You know, when you work with her. Oh yeah, she's a pro. So how is Frankie J? Is Frankie J cool? Like I, I, I have always Man. been a huge Frankie J fan, like ever. Like there used to be this TV show called My Sweet Sixteen on MTV, and uh, and it was like for rich people, and they would like hire to have their Sweet Sixteen parties. I mean, you're too young to even know. This is like yeah. a long time ago. And so one of the girls' dad brought in, uh, brought in Frankie J to like sing at her birthday party, and that was when he was like hits and hits and hits. And and I just thought, oh my God, I wish I would have come from a rich family, and like Frankie J would have come and sang for me at my birthday. <laughs> Because like he's just such a talent. If you knew me, he's I a would really good say. singer. Yeah, yeah, he's a great singer, and he's uh, and uh, and in a lot of ways, you're kind of like coming in as like you know a, a newer, improved version of Frankie J at the time of where music is now. You know, because he's from a long yeah. time ago. I just I just opened uh, I just did a show with him. Um, what like a month and a half ago, two months ago, and it was my first time working with him. And he, man, he's he's super down to earth. Really, really cool, cool dude. Just uh, and and very talented. Yeah, like he's the real Love deal. It. Yeah, that makes me happy. It always makes me happy when like people that you uh, now, that you like do for it. For your birthday, I could have come to your house and sang. You, that's true. You could have. But I, I sang, live with you, so you do come and sing. Look at me. I'm as handsome as anyone could be. You gotta like love Too it. Too bad for you, you scrawny, ugly creep. <laughs> but happy birthday to we're you. We're married, so uh, we're like a, we we like we like uh, you know we fight like cats other. and dogs on, uh, for fun. It's, it's fun. It's all make believe. Everyone out there, when I fight with him, when I say I'm gonna give him a bloody nose or I'm gonna cut a hole in his head with the mic. It's all in fun. So we have like two <laughs> minutes left. So do you have any shows coming up that we need to promote? Well, I'm going to be in Costa Rica next month performing with the Costa Rican Philharmonic. Um, going oh, back wow. over there to kind of spend some time, you know, in in, in my motherland, you know. But um, that's that's the latest thing, that the latest show that I'm working on. I'm starting to prepare for that. And I, I'm just really excited about the music I'm working on, man. I, I got some really, really interesting things, cool things that I'm excited about to put out there. And I feel we like... We can't wait. Yeah, I feel like everybody's going to really, really be on board. So y'all, oh, y'all follow me. Look me up on Instagram, on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, at JP Castillo Music. And you guys yeah, follow him on out. Instagram, you guys. He's got like, I don't know, 160 or 180,000 followers or something on Instagram, you guys. Which one is it? 160 or 180? I know it's one of those big numbers. Uh, yeah, a little over 160, yeah. Yeah, you go. So he's got 160,000 followers on Instagram, you guys. He puts up music videos. He did a great music video doing a Boys to Men song uh, a couple days ago, sometime recently. Yeah. He's awesome, awesome, awesome. Everybody follow him, support indie music. And uh, when his new album comes out or new music yes. comes out, we'll bring him back. And uh, see what we can do so everybody can hear whatever else he has coming out. And we want to thank Holly at I Connect You today for setting this whole thing up for us right. and introducing right. to you. She's fabulous, and we love working with her. And right. we wish we wish everything to go terrific for you and everything that you do. And everybody follow him at and JP I, Castillo Music. I've got a gut feeling you're going to be. Me, guys. I have a gut feeling you're going to be bigger than big. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys bringing me on and giving and, you no. know. Just, Time. You, you Thank you for all the little things you taught me today, man. I feel like I'm walking away with this with like a bunch of new knowledge. Well, you, you know what? I'm gonna, start, I'm gonna start walking around with olive oil all over myself. <laughs> no, you know what's wrong with most Americans that are third generation? They have no history. Everything is disposable in our country. If it gets old, throw it away. People as well. I like to tell people what it was like 60 years ago, 50 years ago in this country. Yeah. I think Europe does that. I'm sure Costa Ricans do and Hispanic yeah. people do. You talk about, like, like, like. Sorry, because we're out of time. Uh, uh, Enrico Caruso, okay? How many people know who Enrico Caruso is? Nobody, hardly. And in Italy, everybody knows who he is because they're taught that. And Madame Butterfly, the opera, is never considered old in Italy. And America, if, like, you have a song out six months, nobody wants it. It's six months old. What's your new song? That's what's wrong with America. We don't cherish, take care of, and admire, and enjoy 
the history. The, the history of our country. Well, I appreciate that, guys. Thank you. And, and, and your beautiful music. It should be cherished. Thank you. Thank you. So so thank you so much, JP, and everybody in the chat room and everybody who's tuned in today. Thank you so much. Please listen and download the show on iTunes and uh, iHeartMedia when they go up, and the video will be up in a couple of days. Thank you so much, JP. Thank you, Danielle and Scotty J. Thanks, chat room, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye, everybody. Hasta la vista. See you. (laughs) Perfect. All right, JP, they got another show, but that was great.